As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting in this chair waiting for the program to begin. And today, I'm going to begin a brand new series. I've never taught it before, and I've never heard anyone else teach it. I'm sure somebody has. I just don't know who. You say, well, what are you going to teach? I'm going to teach a brand new series, which is called The Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed has been in the church for nearly 1,900 years. It was compiled by the Apostles. The earliest known record we have of it dates to the year 140 A.D., and it is a compilation of what the Apostles believed were the non-negotiable tenets and doctrines of the Christian faith, and we need to know what they are. And I'm going to begin teaching the entire Apostles' Creed today. It's 15 programs. I want you to order the entire series and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And I really want you to have the study guide because everything in the series is in the study guide so that you can read it and study along while you're seeing or while you're hearing the programs. My friends, it is just marvelous. I'm so excited to get this teaching into your hands. And today we're offering you a bundle of books. Now you can order all of them as a package or you can order them individually. The first one is Paid in Full, an in-depth book at the defining moments of Christ's passion. I really love this book because it really dives into the subject of Easter and we explore it like you've never explored it before. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Build Your Foundation. Six must-have beliefs for constructing an unshakable Christian life. And we're also offering you my book, which is called how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. And today I'm going to read just a little bit from this book. But there's something else I want you to know about. Because we're teaching the Apostles' Creed, I want you to have a copy of the Apostles' Creed so you can go to our website and you can download it. We've made a beautiful copy of the Apostles' Creed. Now, if you don't have a printer at home, then give us a call or send us an email and we'll slip one in the mail to you. But I want you to have the Apostles' Creed. Mine is beautifully framed. Now, we're not going to send you a frame, but we'll send you the Apostles' Creed. And if you wish, you can frame it like I have framed mine. I think it's a good reminder of what we believe. And in fact, the Apostles' Creed is so very important that many churches quote it every Sunday as a congregation, including our own congregation in Moscow. Every single week in church as a congregation corporately, we recite the Apostles' Creed to affirm what we believe. We'd love to send this to you. It would be our gift to you. And when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And a partner is anyone who regularly gives to help us take this teaching to people around the world. And when we call someone a partner, we really mean they are a partner with our ministry and we love our partners. If you're not a partner, please become a partner with our ministry. And we'll send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says how to survive, thrive, and overcome in the midst of difficult situations. We all need to know how to do that. And we'll send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of forgiveness. We always send these two books to anyone who becomes a partner with our ministry. And when you reach out to us by going online or by giving us a call right now, let us know how to pray for you. We are praying people and we would love to pray with you for whatever it is that's concerning your heart right now. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. My friend, I want you to reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program, and we're believing for a revival of the Bible in the church. Say amen. But hey, I want you to open your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, where under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul is pointing into the future, and he describes something that's going to take place at the very end of the age. Well, we're living in the end of the age, so he's describing events that we will witness. 
So when you come to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, the verse says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But notice the verse begins by saying, Now the Spirit speaks expressly. And when you read this in the original Greek text, it is so strong that it really means the Spirit speaks categorically. The Spirit speaks unmistakably. The Spirit speaks emphatically. The King James translators translate it, the Spirit speaks expressly, which means Paul is not describing something that might happen. He's describing something that definitely is going to occur in the very last age of the church. What's going to happen? Well, the verse says, now the Spirit speaks expressly, emphatically, categorically, unmistakably, that in the latter times, and latter times really in Greek describes when there's not much time left, when you've sailed all the way to the end of the age, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And notice it says some shall depart. This is not an outright rejection of the faith, but it's a very slow, methodical transitioning away from what people once believed. Now they're releasing it to reach over and to embrace something else. And the Bible says they shall depart from the faith. In Greek, the faith has a definite article, which means this is not faith for miracles. This is not faith for signs and wonders. But because it has a definite article, is the faith, the clear, sound teaching of Scripture. There will be people who will begin to move away from what they once believed. And the reason they begin to transition away from it is because of the activity of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, which lure them away from the foundational teachings of the Bible. And my friends, we're witnessing this in our time. In fact, right now in the church, there are many, many people who are unfamiliar with even the most elementary doctrines of the New Testament. And this is very, very unfortunate. And it's really unfortunate that many today that are in the pulpit are no longer teaching verse by verse. They're masterful communicators when it comes to exhorting and encouraging and choosing to teach on different themes and different topics, but verse by verse teaching is really important for the church because when you teach verse by verse, you've got to really think, you've got to really examine, and when you teach verse by verse, you can't pick and choose what you're going to discuss or study. When you study verse by verse, you cover every single subject in the New Testament, so it really gives you a well-balanced biblical education. But today there's a great lack of that. That's what I try to do in this program to bring you teaching that you can trust. Some just don't feel capable to do it because they've never really been educated in biblical doctrine. They're masterful exhorters, masterful preachers, but they're not really educated in biblical doctrine. And the result of this is there's a famine of the teaching of the Word of God in the church today. And some who could do it don't do it because teaching verse by verse is not as popular as it used to be. And as a result of these and a myriad of other factors, this end time drift that the Holy Spirit prophesied about in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 is happening right in front of our eyes. And my friends, I'm going to tell you that this end time drift Seems like it's a horrible development, but it's not a brand new development in the church because when you study the early ages of the church, you find that even at the very outset of the church, the church was being infiltrated with seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, which already were trying to lure people away from the clear sound teaching of Scripture. And the early church really was combating scriptural error and scriptural and spiritual excess. So they had to come up with a solution. What did they do? They began to come together to form what they believe and to put it on paper, and they wrote early creeds. And these creeds were established to bring order to the theological madness that was erupting in the church all over the Roman Empire. And because of the situation that was developing, the early church leaders set down what I call non-negotiable tenets of the Christian faith and used them to determine right and wrong doctrine. And these fixed doctrines were viewed as the most important tenets of the Christian faith 
and they were to never, never be modified. And although there is room for a dialogue on a lot of other subjects, these points, which we're going to be discussing in this series, are to be embraced, they are to be proclaimed as the official non-negotiable doctrines of the Christian faith. And over many, many centuries, those early creeds, which were written by early church leaders, have been great aids to keeping the church on track. The very first creed, which we know of, was called the Old Roman Creed. And I want to read to you from page 217 in my book called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. And if you don't have this book, this is a book that you need to get. You need to know how to keep your head on straight because we really are living in a world that has gone crazy. But on page 217 in this book, I write, The Old Roman Creed is an early version of what later became known as the Apostles' Creed. The Old Roman Creed was written in the second century. It is the earliest known creed of the Christian faith and is widely believed to be the first creed. In the late fourth century, an early Christian leader wrote a commentary on this creed where he recounted the viewpoint that the apostles originally authored the creed together after Pentecost before leaving Jerusalem to preach elsewhere. So it is the oldest creed that we have. But then there was another creed which was written in the year 325 uh, AD, which is called the Nicene Creed. And my friends, it was a very important creed. There were many bishops who gathered together in the city of Nicaea, and they began to write what they believed because there was a false doctrine at that time which was being spread concerning the divinity of Christ, and they felt the need to refute that error. And historians tell us that approximately 300 bishops gathered together in the city of Nicaea, along with other delegates, all together about 1,800 hundred of them, and they wrote what they believed that were most important tenets of the Christian faith. But then we come to the Apostles' Creed, and that is what I'm teaching in this series. The Apostles' Creed really dates back to the old Roman Creed, which the earliest version we have is from 140 AD, but the Apostles' Creed, as we have it today, dates to the year 390 AD. My friends, that's old. And listen to this. Early church fathers referred to the Apostles' Creed. That's what I'm teaching in this series. Early church fathers referred to the Apostles' Creed as the rule of faith. It is a condensed compilation of the teachings of the apostles, and that's why it's called the Apostles' Creed. It covers the core beliefs of the Christian's faith and the early church and in the centuries that followed, they used the Apostles' Creed like a, fil a truth filter. They filtered everything they heard through the Apostles' Creed to determine what was and what wasn't genuine Christian doctrine. And today, the Apostles' Creed is still widely used and quoted in churches all over the world, even in my own church in the city of Moscow. We have found it to be so helpful because many people in our church have come from unbelieving backgrounds. Many of them were atheists. Most Christians do not hold a theological degree. So when you quote the Apostles' Creed together corporately, you're all seeing what we believe. We're saying it together. We're affirming what we believe. And in fact, the word creed really means I believe. It is a statement of what we believe. And the Apostles' Creed says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Now that's amazing because many people today question that, but even the Apostles' Creed says he descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic or Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And my friend, that really is a summary of what we believe in our faith. But today we're going to begin with the very first part of the Apostles' Creed, which says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. But let's begin with the very first phrase, I believe in God. 
the Apostles' Creed begins by stating we believe in God. Why does the Apostles' Creed begin with such a simple statement, I believe in God? Well, at the time that the Apostles' Creed was compiled, it was the Roman Empire. And in the Roman Empire, there was a long list of gods. In fact, if you compile a list of all the Greek and Roman gods, it looks almost endless. So the very first statement in the Apostles' Creed is, I believe in God, and you understand, in God alone, one true living God. Well, this seems like such a simple truth, but today we're living in a world that is returning to paganism where people believe in all kinds of gods and all kinds of ways to get to heaven, and the Apostles' Creed is very necessary to remind us that we still believe in only one God, the eternal triune God who has revealed himself to us as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons with three distinct personal attributes, but without division of nature, without division of essence or being. But the Apostles' Creed then goes on to say, I believe in the Father Almighty. And this is so important because God is our Father. And the Apostles' Creed says, God is the Father of those who become His children through faith in Christ Jesus. They believed it then, we believe it now. This is an essential tenet of our faith. And we call Him Father because Jesus taught us to do so in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, when Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer and said, Pray like this, Our Father, which is in heaven. My friends, God is the Father of those who come to Him through faith in Jesus Christ. And He's also called the Father Almighty, which means He has all the power to do whatever is necessary. And that is why Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, He is God, He is Father, He is Father Almighty. But then the Apostles' Creed goes on to say, I believe in the creator of heaven and earth. And today, the very fact that God is the creator is being challenged by atheists, it's being challenged by anti-creationists, it's being challenged in the public school system, but the Bible clearly teaches us that God is the creator. This really is the foundation of the Old Testament. When we come to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That's what the Bible says. In John chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In John 1, 10, the Bible says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. In Colossians 1, 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul writes, for by Him, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things consist, which means not only is he the creator, he is the sustainer of everything that exists. And in Psalm 100, verse 3, the book of Psalms tells us, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. This means the universe did not come into being by accident. This wasn't by random chance. It came into existence by the creative command of God. But we're living in a day when people are trying to rule God out as the Creator, but for us, who believe the Bible and who call Jesus Lord, this is not an option. And the first affirmation of the Apostles' Creed points us to the true and living God who is our Father, who is Almighty, and who has created and sustains everything around us. Wow. But Psalm 14 verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But my friends, the Apostles' Creed states emphatically the non-negotiable doctrines of the Christian faith for every church, for every Christian, and regarding these key foundational truths of the Christian faith, there is simply no room for negotiation. These are immutable doctrines of our faith, and they need to be taught, 
They need to be embraced and they need to be infirmed, affirmed. And especially in this late hour of the church, when it seems there's a drift from the scripture, it's important that we return to what we really believe. And that's why today I'm beginning this new series called The Apostles' Creed, but we're just getting started. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Every week, churches around the world quote the Apostles' Creed, but they often don't stop to really think about what they're saying or what the words mean. So for many years, Rick wanted to teach every single point in the Apostles' Creed to help people understand these powerful truths. Finally, it's done. Rick says the Apostles' Creed contains the non-negotiable tenets of the Christian faith. And by studying every point and backing it up with teaching from the New Testament, this series will really anchor believers in what they believe. I studied intensively for this series, and it's like a banquet set on the table for anyone who wants to pull up a chair and partake of these powerful truths. I've done all the work for them. This 15-part series is available in digital and physical formats starting at just $24. We're also offering three of Rick's insightful books that you can order as a package for a discounted price of $45. This bundle includes Paid in Full, Rick's book on the moments leading up to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Build Your Foundation, a powerful book outlining six must-have beliefs to build an unshakable life and how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. An essential book needed to navigate this season in a last day's world that seems to have lost its mind. Don't miss this special offer, this series, The Apostles' Creed, and this must-have book bundle. We also invite you to go to renner.org to download for free a beautifully designed copy of the Apostles' Creed. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My friend, I want to tell you something exciting. You know, over three decades that my family and I have lived in the former Soviet Union, God has opened a lot of effectual doors for the Word of God and for the ministry. But recently, a door opened unlike any other door, and we're walking through it. Several years ago, we became the owners of a new satellite network that is called GNC, the Good News Channel. And it broadcasts around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week into 83 nations of the world. But now we have received remarkably a license from the Russian government, the first Christian organization to ever receive this license that gives us the ability to take the signal of our network into every home in Russia. My friends, that's an effectually great open door and God is telling us to walk through it. And for us to walk through this new opening, it's gonna take a lot of money. And today I'm asking you to pray with us maybe about becoming part of the giving team so that we'll be empowered to walk through this open door and take the teaching of the Bible into every home in Russia where people are sitting, looking for answers, crying out, saying, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? And suddenly a light will penetrate their darkness through GNC, our network, and you can be a part of that. If you're already a part of our giving team, thank you. But if you'd like to be a part of this giving team, we invite you to join us. We need you. And people are crying out for answers. And together, we and you working together, we can really make a difference in somebody else's life. Well, today we began our brand new series called The Apostles' Creed. And we've seen the very first part of the creed importantly says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. But when we come back tomorrow, we're going to examine the next phrase in the Apostles' Creed that is so very important. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called The Apostles' Creed. It's 15 parts, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. This will be a great thing for you to study to really reaffirm what you believe or to teach someone else what the Bible teaches. And right now, we're also offering you a bundle of books. Now, you can order them as a bundle, or you can order them separately. The first is my book called Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's passion 
I love this book, especially for the Easter season. We're also offering you my book, which is called Build Your Foundation. Six must-have beliefs for constructing an unshakable Christian life. And I know that that's what you want. And we're also offering you my book that I really want you to have, which is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone crazy. We're living in a world that has lost its mind. But my friends, we need to keep our head on straight in a world gone crazy. And that's why I want you to get this book. And you can go to our website and download the Apostles Creed. If you don't have the ability to print it, then just give us a call or send us an email and we'll slip it in the mail and send it to you as our gift. But you can order these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please let us know how to pray for you. But Father, we thank you that your will is to establish us in truth. Thank you, Father, for helping us to be anchored in the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be back tomorrow. But until then, please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do so any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbors. program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.